Okay, let's continue. Chapter uh, lesson seven. Now, how did our millennialism appear? Okay, how how that uh, doctrine was created? Okay. Now, first consideration that you would understand this. Roman emperor was not happy with the historical pre-millennialism. Okay. Uh, why? Why he did not happy? Because Christians, especially the remnant Christians in these days here, number one, you put on number one, number one is, it's a remnant Christians, remnant Christians were anticipating their true king of kings uh, arriving in this world near 500 years A.D. That was their anticipation, their hope. And as I said, they will, God will create millennium kingdom. Millennium kingdom. And Jesus will be, Jesus will be king of kings. Jesus will be king of kings. And they will be kings. Which is, uh, this idea is what? Historical? That's the historical premillennialism. Premill. King was not happy with this. See, King was a Christian. Don't forget. Okay. The emperor was a Christian. But he was not happy with this doctrine. Simply because of the fact that he will lose his position. Okay? This is a very critical thinking here. At a turning point, eventually, he will lose his Position, emperor position in the event Jesus appears as the king of kings. Because these Christians believing around this time, around 500 plus and minus time, Jesus will appear. Therefore, Roman king Roman king would be very shaken by these teachings, losing his status as the emperor of the empire. Not only that, he suspected Roman empire will be Disappeared when true king of king appears. So these emperor, Roman emperor, although he was a Christian, he was not happy with the Christians' eschatology. Then Christians, historical 
premier Christian eschatology. Now, secondly, to resolve this issue, to resolve this issue, the emperor summoned emperor called summoned Christian leaders and theologians to find out true biblical eschatology to make him happy. Now, at that time, a key leading Roman Catholic Church theologian by the name of Augustine. You heard about his name? Very famous man. He was a key Roman Catholic theologian. I give you this is his time here. AD 354 to 430. Man here, okay? And under his leadership, many uh, that time Roman Catholic theologians gathered together to find out possible set it, possible resolution to satisfy emperor in terms of developing creating new eschatological doctrine to make him satisfied out of their discussions a new idea had come out. New idea. They came up with new eschatological doctrines called amillennialism. Okay. Now, now it came up with amillennialism. Ah means, you know, it's a no. Okay. Ah millennialism they said this Emperor, Sir, there are key findings in Ah millennialism. They came up with key findings. First, that we we review the Bible, then we come up with new way of interpreting the Bible. He would, that's their suggestion to the emperor. Okay, now Bible interpretation should be should be symbolic and allegorical. Should be symbolic and allegorical. We are denying literal. Interpretation. That was their suggestion. As a result, Emperor, we deny literal 1,000 years.
This millennium kingdom, this millennium kingdom should be interpreted in a way, symbolic and allegorical way. Okay? Then he said, Emperor, don't worry. The millennium kingdom, thousand years, is a long period. Not literal 1,000 years. It is a long period we should interpret this way. And also, also, Jesus, this also, this it's a millennium kingdom. Millennium, this millennium kingdom has already started. Now they said this. Millennium Kingdom had already started. When? When? When started? His first coming. Now, over here, his first coming is PC four. And AD, AD 30, this is, they said, Millennium Kingdom, Millennium Kingdom already started right here. This is the moment, this is the moment Millennium Kingdom had already started. Now we are near 500 here. And these theologians suggested, King, that we are in the midst of the Millennium Kingdom. Would you write that down? That's important. We are in the midst of the Millennium Kingdom now. He already came 500 years ago. We are now in the Millennium Kingdom. Then, his second coming will be very long time later. It's a long time later. Long time. This is Millennium Kingdom. Now, let us pay attention to this teaching here. There is no such a literal 1,000 years. The historical premier people are Heretic, they are against the Bible teaching. Millennium Kingdom is a long period, symbolically. Millennium Kingdom already have already started here in early 30. His first coming. So his first coming is the, is the beginning of Millennium Kingdom. Okay, then his second coming will be the end of the millennium kingdom. But that period, this period is not literal 1,000 years. It is a long period. Thereby, we are, emperor, we are in the millennium kingdom. So Jesus already started 
millennium kingdom he is ruling us in heaven jesus is ruling us in heaven and then he will come he will come again long long time later therefore don't worry about his coming right now would you write it down that that's the important don't worry about he will come soon and ruling as the king of kings and those christians saying we will be kings therefore don't worry emperor you are still king of kings your position will maintain until you die don't worry about bible teaches this way okay theobo don't worry about he will take your position away okay don't worry about your kingdom will be disappeared at the moment of jesus second coming don't worry about his second coming his second coming will be long time later now upon receiving this good news from these theologians emperor declared new eschatological doctrines called amillennialism as a official roman catholic church and orthodox churches eschatological doctrine eventually historical premillennialism became heretic 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 means what against the bible teaching okay so from that time on which is the beginning of the medieval period right here you see medieval all the way official roman catholics and orthodox churches eschatological doctrine became a millennialism a means no millennium kingdom literal millennium kingdom okay discarding discarding what historical premillennialism from that time on those who teach historical premillennialism will be under the persecution officially discarded no one can boldly teach the historical premillennialism so that this historical premillennialism stopped its reformation here from here this from here this middle age here to here okay that army all become official and historical premium will be not diminished it disappeared disappeared the later later right after upon the reformation historical premium regained again re appear reappeared again 
after the Reformation. So, in the, during the thousand years of medieval period, no historical premium was teaching. Only nothing but army was prevailing in those days. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. It was not happened by chance. Just write it down, that part. It was not happened by chance. Okay? It was God's divine plan. It was God's divine plan to invite new eschatological doctrine during those medieval period. It was God's plan. Now, you can see here, first, first 500 here came. Okay. During, during the time of Jesus, world population, world population, or the only time is 100 million. During the, during the time of Jesus. Okay. Now, during the time of this, Around 500 time, world population was 200 million. Not much. Not much. So this period of time, the society was a simple society, very simple. Simple society and simple culture. Write down simple culture, simple economy, simple philosophy. Everything was simple and very small population compared to medieval period. Thereby, it was God's plan to those simple people, simple Christians, revealed them simple eschatological doctrines. Simple eschatological doctrines, which is historical premillennialism. That was simple eschatological doctrines. It was very simple. You see, for 500 years, in the church period, and 1,000 years thereafter, so they viewed entire this world was just simply how many years? 1,500 years. Okay? Just as simple. So for those simple-minded people, the Holy Spirit inspired them Simple eschatological doctrines, which is early church period historical premillennialism. That premillennialism was different from today's premillennialism. Okay? Today's premillennialism that we are now uh, taking is far, far complex than the early church time 
pre-millennialism. So in order to in order to supplement the early church period historical pre-millennialism, the Holy Spirit inspired Augustine and their team. The new revelation on the eschatological doctrines called our millennialism. So our millennialism was prevailed during the during the here medieval period. Population was far greater than previous population. Now, this amillennialism uh, comparing to the historical premium is more complex, more sophisticated than previous ones. We will study later our millennialism. Okay? So it was God's plan okay, to develop our millennialism for the sake of us. So I'm not saying our millennialism is unbiblical. It is also is a biblical. We have many, many thought and lessons out of that amillennialism. We should learn, which I will, I will, I will give you, okay, that particular doctrinal teachings. Yeah, we humbly should learn out of that teachings too. Now here, lecture seven. How did our millennialism appear? I have given you historical backgrounds. Historical background. How the Holy Spirit led them, okay, guided them, transferring from historical premier to our millennialism. In view of the historical background and the motivation provided with the, with the emperor, emperor, the emperor to satisfy emperor's demands. Okay, God used that emperor per se. Okay, God used him. Okay, to let the theologians come up with our millennialism. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. So, lesson, lecture number eight, I will teach you then how, what are specific teachings on our millennialism, which will I will teach you after the break.